In this episode of Lance's Garage, we're replacing this tiny and broken IS-12 turbo from a Golf Alltrack with this much larger and improved over the OEM IS-38 OEM plush unit from HPA Motorsports. We're also going to be replacing this stock downpipe with this HPA Motorsports catted downpipe. Okay, so we've got the uh, Volkswagen Alltrack here up on the quick lift out here in the garage. Um, I've seen where you can do this with jack stands. Um, seen a video on that on YouTube for it. Um, I purchased this quick lift uh, about a year ago on Facebook Marketplace. They're unfortunately no longer made at this time due to uh, the cost of steel in the manufacturer. I uh, bought it for my Firebird project. So this is kind of like a trial run um, to make sure that I can get the, get the Firebird in here. And I got to do work on this all track today. Uh, first uh, step one is going to be a removal of the old downpipe um, on an all-wheel drive car. It's much more um, of an involved process than the front-wheel drive only cars because it does require you to disconnect the prop shaft uh, to the rear diff and move it out of the way so that you can uh, finagle the um, stock downpipe out and also put the new one in. So stage one, remove old downpipe. Stage two, uh, remove and install the new turbo and then stage three will be bringing back in the new downpipe and connecting it in place to the to the uh, new turbo so we're going to be removing actually both of the o2 sensors um, one is on the downpipe uh, itself um, and the other one is on the uh, turbo here so we're going to just disconnect these two clips and then you have to remove the uh, clips here or have to remove the wiring from these things to keep them together and this will allow you to work on it. You can see where the one down to the downpipe is kind of close here. Actually, they give an extension with this kit from HPA to, um, it's like an extension piece here because the placement of the O2 sensor on the new downpipe is a little bit different. So to remove these clips from this piece here, you just put, just pull on them. Same thing with the bottom here. Just take a note of which one goes where. And this one. You gotta lift this connector right here. You gotta lift up the thumb here and then those will come out. And now we've got these and uh, you know, that's pretty much it. I don't know if I need to remove these yet. We will see, I'm pretty sure I do. That's just a, like a metal clip that you can push it out there. All right, and That'll be disconnecting that, and that's the first thing we got to do for this. So the next step, uh, we got to remove the dust shields or uh, heat shields from the um, around the prop shaft, and the there's another one that's right in here behind the wheel. So I'm going to remove this wheel. Okay, so a little bit of issue. Can't get a block of wood in. Uh, and doing this sketchy stuff, but it is that board is not going to go anywhere. Um, and this will allow me to get up underneath it here and uh, work on it. I am just going to, real quick, before I really get into this thing, just put some penetrating oil here on this, uh, this V band clamp. So also underneath the car here, this is the connector. So we're gonna be replacing all the way from just before the muffler at this 
bracket here all the way over to up in there. That downpipe goes up in through there. Snakes. Okay, so we're going to remove this V-band clamp real quick. Um, I tried getting some sockets and stuff in here. Basically, you can't really get in here good. It's a very short uh, reach. Um, I tried an electric ratchet. Don't have the distance. My 3 8 comes out to this pipe over here, so it's hitting that. So basically, it's a 6 millimeter Allen. And you got to just kind of, we're just going to go and do it by hand. Luckily, the penetrating oil has already got it, and now I can do it by hand. So, okay, so there's a heat shield above the drive shaft, and you can see one bolt back there. And then the other bolt is actually kind of up, up into the, uh, about the center of that heat shield. So directly above the uh, main axle here on the, uh, on the uh, shaft. So, and the only reason we got to remove this dust cover um, is because there's a bolt underneath of this lower, uh, a nut underneath of this 8 millimeter Allen that is holding on the is the side cover for the prop shaft uh, heat shield cover okay so to get back in there I've got two extensions and a u-joint at the end and then that eight millimeter allen so the engineers definitely do not make it easy to get to this guy but it breaks loose easily with the u-joint and then you can just Of course it dropped okay actually I was able to reach in there and just grab it it was sitting on top of the belly pan so this is what these things look like the Allen's on this side just a threaded nut on that side okay so this upper one we're gonna take you can get it with just a straight extension and an eight millimeter Allen I'm just gonna pull this out now and break it loose and now I'm going to just hand loosen the rest of it here yeah there we go okay please stay on All right, this one stayed on, good. And now this dust shield will just come right out. So, that's what she looks like. Dust shield for the top of the axle. That's out. That 16 millimeter bolt that's right, or not, I'm not, I mean, I'm not sure the size yet. Actually, hold on. So there's a, you can see, there's a, a nut there. That is the side of the heat shield. So that holds the heat shield for the prop shaft from the side and then there's one that we'll have to access from underneath the car but we had to remove this heat shield to get to that not right there okay so I was right it was a 16 millimeter I've got a long extension a deep well 16 millimeter socket and a 3 8 inch you know ratchet right here and I'm going to just remove this and then that will be the we're done with the disassembly at least on the side all right and this is what that fastener on the side of the heat shield looks like it's one of these compound fasteners bolt goes in and this is where piece right here goes the that you pull out how you allen and then 
So now that we're done with uh, those three bolts are the ones that we need this whole side here removed for. So now that we've got those three out and we won't need to mess with this again until this side until we are at the final parts of the reinstallation phase. I'm going to just put the wheel back on here, get rid of this sketchy setup. All right, sketchiness resolved, and now we can continue to safely go underneath the car and do some more work. Okay, we're gonna try and take the uh, O2 sensor out now, so get an extension and an O2 sensor socket. You can see my extension right there. And we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna remove that now before we go pulling the downpipe because that thing sticking out is gonna make it that much more difficult to uh, mess with. So these are a 13 millimeter under here this joint they are going to be rusty that's why I soaked them a little earlier and then you got to break them up and you can see that now it comes down so we're just going to leave it loose and put it there for now because we don't want it fully out This O2 sensor is not in a good place. So you can see it, it's up in there, but it ain't easy to get from the top. It ain't easy to get from below. I'm hoping that I don't have to go through the wheel wheel again and just pr uh, take the wheel back off. But I'm going to figure that out and I will let you know. Okay, quick update. I was able to get the O2 sensor out. Uh, basically, best way to do it, and you'll just have to go based on what tools you have. It's back here. Um, use the, of course, your O2 sensor uh, socket extension. This got this one at Harbor Freight for, I believe it's seven bucks. It was cheap. I had to use a, um, uh, a half inch drive to get some uh, leverage in the right lengths. So half inch, uh, probably a nine inch. I have a half inch to three eighths adapter. And then on the top, I put a universal joint half inch and then a half inch, probably a four inch adapter. And then I threw the breaker bar, long breaker bar on the top to, and then had to kind of hold it right here at the U-joint to kind of get everything as straight as I could. And then it popped right loose and I was able to get the uh, rest of it off. So I'm gonna wrap up for tonight. Okay, back at it and working on the dust cover for the prop shaft. As you can see, I've got the socket. That is an M10 triple square at the very end of that. So it's at about the, between about the 10 and 11 o'clock position. If you're looking at the uh, prop shaft uh, connection point. There. All right, so I got the screw out. Unfortunately, dropped it. So it's going to be on top of the belly pan, I'm pretty sure. So... I'm going to pull the belly pan, but I'm also going to wiggle this uh, dust cover out real quick, too. Uh, you, it, you just got to wiggle it around, kind of finesse it out of there. And then, uh, then I'm going to pull the belly pan here. It's these three 13 inch or M13 uh, 13 millimeter nuts here. Um, and then there's the torques on the sides. I'll let you know what those are here in a second. Uh, so I'm just going to drop that belly pan. Might give me some more access underneath to a few things I need to get to also. So here's what the uh, dust shield looks like. Um, 
So this is the side that the bolt that you come in from the wheel is. This is the one that's up at the 10 o'clock up here. And basically all you have to do to get it out is just kind of move it this way. It'll free up this side and then you can just rotate it around and pull it right out the side here. It comes, it comes right out through there. Very easy. Okay, it's a T25 for the uh, side bolts over here. And those are located basically up the side. Both sides, these bolts here, here, up through there. There's, looks to be maybe one or two up at the front. And then there's also some over on this side the same. The, <clears throat> the 13s are three, the 13 sockets, or there's three of them right here. So I'm just going to pull those out and pull the belly pan off. All right, belly pan is now off. I found the 10 millimeter prop shaft bolt that I dropped. So we're good to go. Okay, after consulting the uh, interwebs, I've decided I am going to remove the three bolts on the forward part of the prop shaft. Those are located right here. It's a nice day, so I'm actually able to get some light, natural light, and some earth in the garage. So this is a 10 point, uh, 12, or this is a 10 millimeter 12 point socket. Must be a 12 point. That, my, I've got some good set of 12 points in a half inch drive, so I'm going to use a half inch drive with probably a 9 to 12 inch extension. That gets it out to about right here which will allow me to get the wrench on. The issue is, I unfortunately have myaligned. Sometimes you get lucky apparently according to the interwebs and you can see, you can get to all three bolts. I'm not lucky. So I'm going to have to rotate the shaft by putting the uh, car in neutral and then going to the rear of the prop shaft and actually just getting on and trying to act like I'm tightening those bolts, which will rotate the shaft while the car's in neutral. I do have uh, some blocks uh, on the uh, thing there. I believe I can also put it in uh, uh, the keep the emergency brake on, and this should work. Uh, we'll see, um, but I'm just going to rotate this and then pull out these three bolts so that I can remove have it so I can slide the prop shaft over this way. Okay, quick update. I actually went and got into the car and moved it forward here and got the bolts, I think, in the orientation I need to get to them on. They rotated uh, counterclockwise about maybe 30 degrees. And so now I should be able to get to all three of the bolts this one might be a little hard still, but we're going to try. Okay, I am cursing the Volkswagen engineers right now. So this is the about the one about uh, 4 o'clock. I've got a socket on it. Um, I had to use a uh, 3 8 and uh, find a 3 8 10 millimeter socket, uh, short socket. That in and of itself is a feat. And then the other ones I should be able to get either with that one or the half inch. So now I'm going to pull these uh, three bolts and continue with the process. I actually had to come in underneath of here and kind of guide. You can see up in here. So... I had to guide it in through this little slit just to get it in there and figure out where the connector was. So I'm hoping that this, this could be a huge pain to get back together. Hopefully nothing moves. The tolerance on this stuff is so tight. Okay, all three bolts are removed. I did have to pull out a cheater bar, basically the end of a, a 
jack and these are the three eighths on the top and on this on this bottom one here can now work on getting these two bolts off the dog bones removed but this is uh very difficult to get this uh these prop shaft bolts out not fun uh you definitely probably don't want to be doing this on a set of uh low ramps oh you got to get this car up in the air to do this job because it's just it is just a lot of like little stuff here and there to and and getting the leverage necessary would be very hard on a set of ramps okay yep after consulting with the uh inner webs the next step is to remove these two 16 millimeter bolts off the dog bone these are one-time use bolts i actually ordered the replacements as part of a kit from ecs probably and let's see And it's gonna move as soon as we get the camera out. There it goes. So now it is free. So I also just took and put a little black piece of black sharpie on this bolt on the inside. This is looking from the front of the car back to the back side of the prop shaft. And I put a little mark right there just so I know that should stuff get wonky that these are where these that bolt needs to be aligned to that part of of the prop shaft needs to be aligned to that part of the there okay so i'm just checking a few things here this is the dog bone uh, i'm noticing oh, so you're going to put a pro bar i believe right here on the transmission you see how it'll move forward what I'm noticing though here is when I move it forward, this is getting, I don't have a lot of slack in this. I'm guessing it's a uh, temperature sensor since so on the bottom of the oil pan, oil temp sensor. So I'm just going to disconnect that real quick and do that out of the way. I'm trying to figure out if I can do this by myself. Uh, here is the prop shaft. Actually, let's see. Here's the prop shaft right there and you put the this is where I think you put the pry bar out about right here and then you can see how it's when I'm doing that it's moving the whole unit although I am going to check on this again because this is kind of a step and you can see it's starting to split that uh, thing there a little bit as I pull. So the goal is, is I need you need to push the, or use the pry bar to move the, the uh, motor towards the front of the car, and then you have to simultaneously while the motor is up, you have to move the drive shaft to the left. And I'm trying to figure out if I can do this by myself as a one-man job. So I'm just checking a few things and then we will come back. So the one thing I did find was the, um, these are like these uh, little recesses, uh, these bevels that go into the prop shaft at the three points where the bolts go through. So they go into that little rubber fitting there. And it was actually pulling with as I was rocking the motor forward, it was pulling the drive shaft with it, and those weren't breaking free. So I had to I sprayed just a little bit of penetrating oil into each of those. The top one, I'm trying to get it into. Okay, I finally got it broken loose there. I had to basically take a uh, flathead screwdriver. This top one, this part right here of the top one, this little beveled edge, was just stuck in this rubber this rubber drive shaft uh, mount. You can see the pilot bearing right there. And it, now that it's popped, I got I can get a full, I can get the screwdriver clean through it now. So it was 
like stuck to that so now I should be able to just pull the uh, uh, just, just pry it now like I've been saying and I should be able to move this over uh, I got you got to make sure that you clear pry this out enough so that this whole um, sleeve here uh, the pilot bearing comes completely out so that you don't damage it and then move it over this way to the we're going to move it over here towards the driver's side and then we can finally start removing this down part what a pain okay so the drive shaft you can see now there's the pilot bearing assembly and i've got it moved over to here okay found a way to keep the drive shaft started to try to look at some zip ties there's no really good way to get them around here so I basically just took uh, the same block a block of wood that I had that I was gonna that you could actually use in between here and the bevel at one point and just basically kind of wedged it in there so and now we can start pulling out these bolts uh, on the hanger and there's two 13 inch bolts on the uh, so you can see it right and they're not going to be easy to get to let's see what we got here so one of them is going to be uh, right up here and the other one and they're both off right off the cat here that you can see and the other one is right so you can see it right up so I can actually touch it right there. So now I'm just gonna go and get these loose. That's actually it towards the back here. You can see it up there and up there. And then so loosen those and then loosen this down here last, the hanger, and then we can start dropping this thing finally. So I'm actually gonna come up here from the top. I can reach my hand right back down here around where the O2 sensor was, and I can feel the bolt right there and I can feel the bolt off to the side here so there's one like right here almost directly below the uh, oil inlet fill area just straight down and the other one's over right by the O2 sensor so we're gonna 13 millimeter uh, quarter inch and see if we can break them loose with that and then, and then I'll go back underneath I want to try and do this from up top Okay, you can get them from the top. I used a 3 8 with a 13 uh, deep well. Tried the 13 shallow, but you can't because of the way the connectors are. Um, these are the two uh, bolts, or the nuts right here. They just go on a set of studs that are off the block. So I basically cracked them loose with this and then hand undid them. Now the final piece that we need to do, that's the f that's everything to get this loose here. So you now you can see this is now moving. Uh, the final piece of the puzzle now is to climb back underneath, disconnect the uh, the hanger, and then work it out from the bottom and work it out through the bottom. Other than the billy pan, these are literally the only other two bolts that have come out. With the electric ratchet. And I can say I have been cursing the Volkswagen engineers in my head because make a car that you can work on with some damn power tools. Jeez, no way. There's no room anywhere in that engine bay for this part of the procedure to get any of this out. And it is annoying. Okay. So, see we've got this, this is coming down now. We're gonna come back here. And we're now gonna move that, which is gonna allow that to drop up here. And now you just work it out.
to make sure you have these two ears on the pipe or what's going to give you all the problem here. So that's where you're going to be working it out here. Dunsky. Done, done, done. Okay, decided to work a little bit more this evening, so we're going to start taking apart the things up here that we need to. So we're just going to take that off there. <clears throat> All right. And then, how's it on the bottom? First uh hmm. all right, I'm probably just gonna have to take the thing off there. <clears throat> the other piece that you gotta need to take off just loosen this lower boost. Uh, air charged air pipe here. There's a Allen, I believe it's a T, or I'm sorry, a T25 Torx. Let me verify. Okay, so it's a T27. Just if you got a, you need a short one. I've done this one on Mark 8 with the on another video, but uh, yeah, just pull that one out and then uh, that'll loosen up the upper pipe or the lower pipe. Okay, just gonna see if I can get this out here with a seven. It'll let me get this in here. Yeah, of course not. This is just lovely. All right, so just taking a seven millimeter quarter inch because there's not enough to turn here. 
deep well and just hand turning this thing because there's not really a good way to get in here. Okay, got that one off. So, there is the lower boost tube that comes in right there. And I gotta figure out where the hole is for it and hope that I can maybe get it with a ratchet at this time. Because, again, they aren't giving you a lot of room to work up here. All right, I'm just going around. I'm going to get rid of these T30 screws, remove them here, here, and there's one back here that hold this uh, coolant rail over. I've disconnected this to give me some a uh, little bit more play. Um, then I'm going to remove the uh, coil packs and or the not the coil packs themselves but the uh, coil pack connector harness here to free up some room. Uh, uh, I think that's and then I gotta see what else I gotta do but I know I gotta do that stuff so I'm gonna get that out of the way. So it keeps going for got from went from bad to worse. Started taking off the coil packs. You lift up on this plastic tab here and just pull up like that. And when I did this one, it broke. So I'm trying to figure out how to get that one off. And I might just have to call it an evening because this is just frustrating. Well, if you take a screwdriver underneath, you can get it up, but then it broke the clip off right there. So I don't know. I think it will hold itself on with the uh, so this whole so this whole rack here keeps so if I have three I think it'll keep this on good enough for now and then I can research what it is to uh, fix this I'm assuming it would have to be replacing this mechanism here which doesn't look easy so probably a D pin and pin. But I'll worry about that later. The other thing on the Mark 7 is a stupid PCV valve to the turbo inlet. There's no easy way to get it off. So basically you disconnect it right here. Then you turn the turbo pipe, tape the whole thing off. And then once you have the turbo inlet pipe off, you can then pry it off with a screwdriver. And that's what the bolt, look, or the bolt looks like for the PCV. A little bit different from the other two. Just keeping them all straight here so that I can, you know, figure this out. Okay, got it removed. Uh, the turbo inlet pipe, there's a T30 uh, screw that holds the thing in, but it's, I need to see about getting it out all the way here. Oh, there we go. So that's what that one looks like. Putting it right there. And once I had this out, you basically wedge the inlet pipe. You basically wedge a screwdriver or a pick underneath here, and it basically kind of breaks that plastic lip up in here. These are supposed to be. These are traditionally you squeeze them like this from the sides, and you break them off like that. But this type that Volkswagen used on the Mark Sevens, yeah, you can't do that with. So. Now we've got the pipes off, the boot, the air uh, charge pipe. We got the turbo inlet pipe off. We got to remove, start removing some more stuff. But I think I'm hitting the point where I'm just doing stupid stuff now. So definitely, this is definitely my calling it quit for the evening. Just gonna go in. Maybe have a beer or two, it's New Year's Day, and just relax for the rest of the evening. Okay, gonna remove this diverter valve sensor here. It's definitely in there good. This plastic clip here. Okay, so push down, lift up. It's kind of like a spring-loaded clip, and it'll come off. 
so that frees up this guy now we need to come over here there's a clip on your this guy that we need to take off right behind the oil plate here all right we're gonna move this we'll move this cam sensor just pull up on these this uh, silver part there and it comes off and then we're still trying to get this guy off of here this clip I might just cut that tire up off and do a new one all right it takes a decent amount of force but to get that clip off of that little piece of plastic there it is on there really good you can see it's kind of got like a locking uh, mechanism in here Comp convoluted thing but just uh i actually used a tiny screwdriver to come in from this side a little bit to kind of get underneath there and pry it and that uh, helped pop it off um i tried to use a pick the first time but uh the uh process demanded a blood sacrifice so that at least usually when i'm working on a project and i do a blood sacrifice i know that at the end it's gonna work but that's uh, just the way it is okay there is a clip here to one of these lines right here you can see it so you just disconnect that and then that'll like free up this harness to get out of the way next we're going to remove the uh coil packs here and this is i think uh to give more room and also so you don't damage the coil packs as you're because this whole thing is going to have to rotate up so i'm going to remove the coil packs now that's just basically taking off these connectors these bolts and then just pulling them out Okay, so this whole uh, rail right here, part of the front part of the wiring assembly, actually clips on top of this piece here that we're going to be removing this whole coolant, hard coolant line. So we've got to remove, I've removed the end over here. We've got to remove uh, here, 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 and back here so that this thing can be moved up out of the way because we're going to need to basically be pulling the turbo up through here. So this whole hard line's got to get out of the way. Uh, so I had to put a screwdriver under here to pop this up. Now this allows this to move a little bit more freely. And then I should now be able to remove the coolant lines here, here, and there. And we will do that and Hopefully not have a ton of corn everywhere. Okay, just like everything else, hard to get to. Got that back there. Then I take this and just kind of lightly just move it to loosen that up. Also had to take a pick up underneath this. This might cause coolant drain issue there a little bit not a lot okay so I'm just gonna stick that up in this old clip up here just so let gravity do its work I got this one off I still have to get so this one came off easy this one's a little bit more harder to get to um, and then I think at this one there's a t30 Right there that I'm going to take and that's what I'm going to do. Oh, actually that is draining a little bit more now. Let me just grab a coolant pan and throw it. Alright, throw a coolant pan down below. You can hear it draining. Uh, so, just make sure you have one ready. So that you can get it down underneath there as you're doing this part of the process. Alright, did decide to go ahead and remove my air box because it's really on the APR intakes. It's only one screw that holds it in up here. Then it rests on this little bumper. Um, 
Now it gives me a look at the secondary air filter too. Looks all right. So now I can get into this one better. Okay, with the air box out of the way, I was easily able to get this one off. So now we've got this and this. This is at the top of the radiator, so that one's still got a decent amount of coolant in it. Uh, so the last thing to get this whole piece off of here is this connect. Okay, did decide, didn't take it off the flange, uh, just decided to do that. Got to it with a set of these, uh, I got these at Harbor Freight a long time ago. Uh, bent needle nose pliers allowed me to get over there, then kind of had to wrestle it. But uh, now this whole pipe now comes out. Uh, and okay so now we can start on the removal of the heat shield here let's just that's the o2 sensor thing the o2 sensors that down in here we'll be taking that off here in a little bit but um i think this might be the best way just to leave this in place uh that came off just fine uh and yeah so now let's take off the heat shield Okay, yeah, so after some consultations here, there is a 10 millimeter back here that we need to remove. And then there are two five millimeter Allens right here, 10 millimeter bolt, five millimeter Allen. And then there are two five millimeter Allens back on the inside of this uh, dust shield holding it to the block. So we're gonna remove the 10 millimeter bolt first and then hit the two allens here and then finally the two allens in the back and that is why <clears throat> if you're just doing a turbo swap and not doing the downpipe at the same time i think you're gonna have uh you're gonna just wish you'd done the whole thing at once because you really almost have to have you, this you can't do this with this with the downpipe in the way the same size all right so just to show you the other two are back here Let's see if I can get something set up here with the lights one is right here the other one is right there so I'm gonna remove these two five millimeter allens also and then this heat shield will come off so I just cracked them loose with the old school Allen. Get the first one done. And then I'm just hand doing these. They're the same size as the front two 5mm Allens. So that's good so you don't have to worry about which ones you use where when you put it all back together. And now that heat shield just comes right off like that. And now we're going to need to <clears throat> get our O2 sensor wrench and go ahead and break loose the uh, O2 sensor. So I just broke this loose with the O2 socket and now just hand, hand turning it. Alright, this is where things is going to start to get fun. And by fun, I mean as much as I've been complaining about tight clearances and tolerances and blah, 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 that they don't give you to work on this car, here's where it's going to get nasty. Not with these two. These two are going to be relatively easy, comparatively. So, this is oil fill line, coolant line, going into the turbo. Now, these two are not the problem. The problem is, on the back side... There is a coolant return, 
and an oil drain line. And you only got this much area to work with. So here's one. I can actually, this one's actually not going to be bad. The one that's really bad is down below here. Let's see, so you can maybe see this. So this is one of the drains right here, and it's a seven millimeter triple square, I believe. And then the other one is in some god awful position, I believe, right around there. So that one's the hard one to, to get to. And I'm, I'm actually going to look at this too, just so I can get a reference. Okay, so this rear bolt here is a 10 millimeter. I just use a wrench just to break it. And then I'm going to just hand take it off here just because I really want to be careful. Oh, and it's actually like a weird uh, double bolt like that. So that's good, so I can't kind of mess it up. However, I am going to go ahead and bag it. Because these are a little special and now I need to go get a seven millimeter triple square and figure out how I'm gonna get it in there because I don't think the ones I've got are quarter inch but hopefully they are okay just a correction this is a eight millimeter triple square so we removed the ten millimeter up here and then there's a secondary bracket right here holding it or this holding it in here which is an eight millimeter triple square and i'm gonna do that on and then i'm gonna bring this up and then now that should allow this to come up i believe although I'm going to have to check on that some more, and I'm going to put this in the same bag with the other one so I don't misplace it. Okay, when you're removing this, be very careful. This is under the line here. So I've seen videos where they just show you pulling up one here, and it comes right up. Mine did not. I actually felt the tube start to bend a hair and stopped immediately. So, uh, you can see it. Um, still circular. Uh, didn't crush it down too much so I think we're I think we're good but I'm basically just gonna you just kind of I've been just kind of tapping it with some you know stuff around the edges here just to kind of free it up and just gonna try and see about prying it up there but uh, you know the one video I showed just showed a guy just pulling it up right here and it came right out and mine is in there good so I've got to just do but if this tube is not strong enough to just yank on it hard so be very careful okay so just as a point of reference here this car is about five years old actually yeah five years it'll be it's five years this month um, final payment coming up uh, the um, it has about 60,000 miles on it so that gives you about how many what's been going on and the wastegate has failed which shows that this you know gets very hot and warping metal here so what's happened here is that this thing is just on there real good this oil fill line it's just on here super hard so I'm just basically putting in some penetrating oil WD-40 taking a screwdriver just kind of tapping it very lightly around I'm starting to get a gap now on the uh around here so just work letting that penetrating oil and you can see it kind of moving now there it goes it's starting to come up so you just got to take your time and I'm just kind of wedging this up very slowly don't just don't yank on the top of it real hard now there it came off okay so that's off now you can see all the rust up in here um so all these uh, will get replaced anyway but you can see where i had to put the penetrating oil in okay next thing we're going to do we're actually not going to remove the line from the turbo while it's in here this uh, antifreeze inlet we're going to take this hose off here gonna loosen up these this t30 
and this T30 right here to kind of give us some wiggle room and then we're just going to pull this hose off in place and then we will uh, move this piece over once the turbo is out. Also, while you're working on this, just make sure you pull off your, uh, basically your diverter valve connector, um, off just the spring clip and do that. That's the doing, that's running the, uh, rod in and out that uh, opens up the wastegate flap over here. So just pull that out while you're working on this side over here too. Um, and now with this part and this part done, we're down to the last two, uh, the two drains on the back and then the four bolts to flange will be next. Okay. So using that T30's torque, I'm just gonna, it's actually narrow enough to get over here. I've seen some people that have had to like do it a different way where they basically take a bit and then use a, uh, a wrench instead of and just kind of grab leverage around the bit with the wrench so i'm just going to now i've got that i'm just going to hand i'm loosen it here all right and i'm going to put that in the bag so that i don't Lose, I uh, don't keep this one. Actually, I'm just gonna put it right here now that I think about it, right up top here for that. And then the other bolt is going to be that M8. I might be able to get a socket in there. Let's see. Okay, so now we're just gonna come back here with a flathead screwdriver up towards where the base of this goes in and just kinda don't wanna put a ton of pressure on it. This again, I've seen videos of, so I might need to just kinda put some penetrating oil on here first because it doesn't seem to be wanting to cooperate quite like other people's videos have done and i would imagine it's being on the same part of the color it's just as corroded as it was over here so let's see if i can just kind of okay so that's where that is it's hard to get anything in there i might have to get a smaller screwdriver there's a WD-40 on her. Ease. Let's just let that kind of... Same thing as before. Take your time. Soak the stuff. Better to take maybe 10 to 20 minutes to allow some penetrating oil to get in there break things loose a little bit and not 
break a line that's going to have cost you a trip to the dealer and unteen more hours of work to do. So we're going to let that settle a bit and then come back. Okay, so I'm just kind of back here and I'm just twisting that line a little bit just to kind of work that uh, penetrating. Okay, so penetrating oil work. Just have to twist it from down this side and then <clears throat> I was able to finally pop it off using the uh, handy dandy ancient craftsman flathead screwdriver. Just get it behind there and you can wedge it against the housing. Now, since I didn't drain the coolant system, there's still some coolant draining down here. I'll have to clean up a little bit. I did miss it. It's actually, it drains a little further back than where you, if you had your pan set up, if you did this like me, same order. Make sure you push that pan back about five inches because the system will start draining out of the back of the turbo until it gets to steady state with this. Okay, so the final line, it's hard to see. So here's the, you can see the rod where my finger is right there. So if you come up just here, it's like right, if you can see my finger, it's like right where my finger's moving right here. Right there is where the M, the last M8 is, so. Hoping that I can move this out of the way and get a straight shot up there with a short uh, drive. And then that'll be the oil drain. So it turns out the one that I thought would be the hardest at the bottom is actually uh, not as bad as I thought. I'm using a um, this M8, this longer reach kit here. I actually got the kit off of Amazon, I believe, a while ago. <clears throat> uh, vector tools, 10-piece, long spline bit socket set, uh, triple square. So basically, with this uh, longer reach M8 and this socket, I'm able to get right up underneath there. And uh, I broke it loose already. So now I'm just going to do it uh, the rest of the way, maybe do it by hand. And just can't really see it that good, but this is where you bring up that bit from the bottom there. You can kind of see it. You can see my hand moving. So that's the M8 in that drain piece. And I'm just going to remove it now and then we'll pop it loose. Bonus points can get the electric ratchet from Milwaukee in there and lock it right out. So that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, so I climbed under the car, uh, grabbed it with a set of, tried to pull some on the tube, feel it given just a hair again, just like the upper one did. So I went and grabbed it with a set of uh, um, needle nose with the uh, curved ends. I was able to pull it down. I think part of the issue is that it's not really, it's pretty stiff pipe being the drain line going down. So I think when I pull it up, I can see it giving about, you know, that much. So I think when I pull the whole turbo out, it should separate with it. Let's hope so. So I'm going to try and do that now. Okay, update. I finally got the lower oil tube, drain tube free, and I fixed it with fire. So basically, you can get up on it. You've been able to see in the videos. I basically just shot the torch right at the uh, base near the drain tube, but heating up the housing. Uh, did like a 20 second flash, a little bit of PB blaster. Let it set for a very short amount of time. Flash it again. Uh, did a twist and a pull down and it broke loose. So now I'm going to be able to get the turbo out. Um, just have to pull the two bolts and pull it out of the top. So basically on the base of the turbo here, there is these four bolts. One on, they're 12 millimeters. So I'm just gonna come in here with a, a uh, 12 millimeter uh, ratcheting wrench. 
I'm going to undo the bottoms first, and then I'm going to do the tops. And there's also actually a stand back here that you can see that's got like an, I believe an M8 on it that you can see back over there. That I need to take that top bolt out too before it'll come out. So that's the plan. Going to pull out the turbo now. Okay, update. I was able to get the turbo bracket. So there's a the it's a six Allen up at the top, and I also loosened the uh, 13 millimeter at the bottom. It's a kind of a wavy bracket like that. Uh, it seemed like it was stuck, but it wasn't. I put a little bit of penetrating oil on it. I did need to use a um, one inch, or I'm sorry, a half inch drive on the um, on the six Allen to get the leverage. The three eighths wasn't giving me enough leverage, um, so I went to the half inch with some adapters to the six Allen, and that allowed me to break it loose. Uh, the 13 on the bottom, I went ahead and just used a uh, half inch drive on it, also again to get more leverage on it. Came loose. These are 12 millimeter bolts or nuts. There we go. Out. Out, out, out. Way longer than I should have been, but it's out. So I've removed the uh, coolant inlet line from the unit, from the turbo, the old turbo. Um, looks like this. Uh, Basically, I've already removed the O-ring. Um, want to put a lot of, took a lot of PB blaster and then just kind of like just gently tapping it with a um, a wrench or, you know, just something, something that can move it and it'll start to move and just keep penetrating oil, alternating. Uh, PB blaster I found has been the best so far, so use that. And then, uh, also, this evening, I went ahead, because I had messed around with the trying to take off the lower part of the oil drain tube, I knew that if I put this thing together without pulling the, both sides of this now, because I tried, I unloosened this and pulled it, I knew that if I didn't pull it all the way out and replace this O-ring, that uh, it would come back and haunt me. So, I have decided I'm going to run to the dealership uh, tomorrow, pick up uh some o-rings for this side the kit came with the upper o-ring so i'm good there uh, but i just want to do this right and once so i'm just taking my time with this build luckily i don't need the car right away i can drive my truck to work um but uh if if you don't if you only pull the top you don't have to mess with pulling the whole line um i've seen people where they pull out some videos where they pull out to the lower line because the upper is hard to get to. Um, I would just say that, uh, you know, whichever way you go, make sure that uh, you, whatever you loosen and turn, just go ahead and replace those uh, seals so that you only got to do the job once. Okay, back at it. I'm installing, I'm installing the block side of the uh, oil return drain. It's the... Uh, um, M8 triple square. I've got two extensions and an extended bit on there. And then the uh, torque specs for this are uh, 9 Newton meters, which you would think with the metric system that would equate to uh, 90 kilogram centimeters on the small torque wrench that I got here. But no, it equals, it's actually 10 point 
one nine per one newton meter to uh, kilogram centimeters. So it comes out to be a bit close to 92. Uh, kilogram centimeters equals nine newton meters, according to the internet. So I'm going to torque it to that. And then I'm going to move to the top and work on the uh, getting the turbo in and all the rest of the drain lines uh, connected. So on the new turbo, uh, the lines go in the same spots. The big difference on the new turbo and the old turbo is your uh, wastegate actuator. On the IS-12, you can see it points towards the back of the firewall. So this is the IS-12 and the uh, wastegate actuator here. The connector, electrical connector, goes back towards the firewall. With the uh, IS-38, the electrical connector comes back towards the engine block. And in other videos, I'm seeing that they say that you need to connect this while you're putting it in um, so that you don't hit the engine block. Or so, because when you, if you, if you tighten it to the exhaust uh, manifold before you connect it, you won't be able to get the connector in there. So it's just something you got to be aware of while you're putting this together. When you rotate it in, you might need to have somebody to help you on that side just to connect the electrical connector before you fully seat it up against the exhaust manifold and tighten down the bolts. So just something to be aware of. I am going to now go ahead and just as I removed the turbo with this connector, this uh, coolant inline uh, fill line connected, I'm going to uh, install it with it connected too. So I'm going to put this, um, go ahead and connect this prior to installing the turbo and that will also be connected at uh, 9 newton meters or 92 kilogram centimeters depending on your torque wrench. Okay, so I've also went ahead and put the gasket on here. Make sure that you're lubing up the uh, O-rings. Uh, I put oil around the uh, oil ones. Um, I use some coolant around the coolant ones. I've got the one installed on the turbo. I'm going to install the turbo gasket, um, the new one that was supplied with the kit before we put it in so we don't forget about it. So it just kind of comes in here and mounts to the back of the, the flange in between the turbo and the manifold. And that's that. We're getting very close to the reinstall the turbo. I'm going to leave the gasket off of the fill line until after we put the turbo in because um, this fill line is going to get in the way and I'm probably going to need some help to uh, kind of pull it up or just put like a, uh, a bungee cord or something around it to kind of keep it up out of the way here so we can slide the turbo in. Um, also you got to be aware of your, your drain lines, both your coolant and your oil uh, down here while you're putting the turbo in. You might just want to push them down to give yourself some extra room. And again, here is the, where's the connector? So here's that connector I was talking about for the turbo um, for your uh, diverter valve, this connector. So you need to just kind of get it up here and ready. Um, and probably you might be able to do it with one hand. I'll see if I can um, and get that on. Uh, it looks like you can, Maybe put it on as you're bringing it in over here might be hard because the turbo is a little you know has a little weight to it um, But we'll see what happens. I'll try it by myself and if not, I'll go get uh, a helper Okay, so the turbo uh, goes in the same way it comes out Just uh, bring it in from this side from the passenger side Rotate, kind of rotate it in as you're coming down. I do have the top two bolts just kind of very loosely. They're uh, hand tight just to the where they start getting pressure. I'm now working on that uh, wastegate 
connector. You can fish it down through here. Like I said, the bottom bolts aren't in yet, so I still have a little bit of play in the turbo. And you can fish it down into here. And then you can just, you can kind of, I was able to finagle it onto the connector. There we go, got my hands on it now. Let me just make sure I've got my the right side on that thing. But, so I did this by myself. Um, it is tight, but uh, it is doable with a one person. I'm just gonna make sure and go until I hear that click. And then I'll tighten up the uh, turbo bolts here. Okay, you can actually crawl up underneath the car and you'll see, you'll be able to see the connector from underneath, from the backside through the, the drive shaft tunnel there. And you, you can actually uh, pop in the connector from there. That's what I actually did. Crawl underneath, allowed me to get, grab right a hold of it, click it. It was, you have to apply a lot of force to pop until you hear it click. Um, after you hear it click, you're good. Just pull on it, make sure it's out of, uh, Make sure it won't pull out and uh, then you're good to go. All right, also before you put the bolts on or the nuts on the turbo flange here, just put your little dab of anises on each of the uh, um, posts there, the studs, so that uh, if you have to come back in here and work on it again, uh, stuff won't be as hard to get off. You can see that these are uh, already corroded over with just 60,000 miles in five years on them. So. Uh, just save yourself some trouble in the future. Okay, got the uh, bolts. I haven't torqued them yet. Uh, I use a ratcheting wrench, 12 millimeter, to get them back on. I put anti seize on all the studs. Um, they get torqued to 25 newton meters. I don't know that I'm going to be able to get a torque wrench in there, so I'm just going to have to, I might have to wing it. I do highly recommend on the install part and probably on the taking the turbo off too now that I've done this um, take a bungee cord and just put it in your grill here and put it around the fill tube like this and it'll keep that out of the way when you're pulling both the turbo out and putting it in. You can also go ahead and install your uh, charged air uh, tube here on the bottom. Uh, I wouldn't tighten it down yet uh, but just to get it, uh, the toe hose out of the connected. Um, I haven't tightened it yet, but I'm going to a little bit later. Um, also, I still got, I'm going to be putting on a uh, 034 Motorsports um, turbo inlet pipe as part of this install. In the, some testing that I saw on some, some flow testing, it seemed like it was a really good uh, unit. That's the only thing that this HPA um, Turbo doesn't come with as an upgraded turbo inlet pipe. You'll need to buy that separate. It does come with a turbo muffler delete, so you don't have to buy that. Um, it has a uh, different non-OEM non diverter valve. Hopefully it'll sound uh, pretty cool. We'll see uh, compared to the stock. Um, and it's got some updated uh, bearings and supposedly the wastegate flapper is a, an improved design also. Uh, but just make sure if you are going to be uh, doing this install, go ahead and invest in a uh, new turbo inlet pipe because you don't want to be putting that the stock unit uh, from your IS-12 over here uh, because that's where it's going to be pulling in the air from your intake. So you want to get as much air, as less restriction coming in here as possible. Okay, back under the car now. We're going to connect the oil drain tube. Uh, to the bottom of the turbo and then after getting that snapped into place make sure you lube your uh, o-ring with some oil on the oil line uh, we're going to do the uh, coolant connection which is on the back of the turbo there get it into place and then uh, after it make sure you lube that up with some uh, coolant and stuff and then uh, put the um, Eight triple square bolts that were holding those in place and the other one the uh, coolant outlet has both the uh, triple square eight and the uh, t30 uh, bolt that goes on that part but there's just a m8 
on the oil drain line. So hopefully this goes in much easier and better than uh, getting it out, but we'll see. Okay, both of them went in place very easy. Uh, I did have to take a pair of the uh, forcep, uh, uh, forcep end uh, or the bent end uh, needle nose pliers, and just kind of help the oil drain just just to get some equal leverage on both sides to and push it up. Uh, the coolant went right in, so now what we got to do is just put in the bolts, and then uh, those again get torqued to. 92 kilogram centimeters or nine newton meters okay so this is part of the reason why it's good to watch somebody else's video uh, including mine uh, because do not put the coolant drain line into the turbo until after you have tightened up the oil drain line you won't be able to get to it easy uh, with the coolant line in place. So I actually had to pop it back loose uh, to get the uh, oil uh, drain tube uh, eight triple square bolt uh, back up in there. I'm still tightening it and I'm doing it from the bottom this time. I was, I was able to pull it out uh, from the top on the removal procedure, but on the install I'm finding it easier to come down here and uh, do it from the bottom. So completely install the oil drain tube before, re before connecting the coolant drain line. Otherwise you're going to, have to pull the coolant drain line back off like I did and just takes up more time. So learn from my mistakes and secure the oil drain line first then the coolant drain line. Okay, oil drain line is secured. You can actually come up here from in front of the K member and you can get a good view of it up through here and you kind of work your wrench right here and then you can, uh, it's hard to fit a torque wrench in there, uh, but I just I was able to do it by having the end of the torque wrench out here in the drive shaft area and working it and looking from up here in front of the K member with the light to see, to get that secured. It's now tightened down to the 92 kilogram centimeters, nine Newton meters. I'm gonna check it once more, just to be sure. And then I'm gonna go reconnect the coolant drain line and then secure that. Okay, I've got the back mostly in. I'm gonna have to probably guess on the torque uh, because you can't get a torque wrench back here for the nine Newton meter, 92 kilogram centimeter on the drain tube and then there's this t30 back here i don't know the torque spec i think it's just get it in a tight i've also gone ahead and reconnected this okay so um got the rear uh coolant line on the t30 that's on the bracket that also holds it on still haven't put the fill line on I'm still uh Got one more thing to do before that. I have tightened up uh, this pipe, this coolant line for the fill and reconnected this T30. I still got to put in uh, this T30 right here. Okay, just put some anti-seize on the black wired O2 sensor and going to install back in there prior to putting on the heat shield. Okay, O2 sensors in. I've gotten the uh, turbo bolts at the exhaust flange um, to what I'm going to say is close to 25 newton meters as I can with just a ratcheting wrench. Um, I still got to put on the heat shield, but before that we need to connect the rear turbo support. Uh, this has the Allen at the top, and then it's got this 13 millimeter uh, bolt at the bottom, and basically the top it comes in and hooks onto the back of the turbo. The bottom, there's a little notch at the back of the uh, engine block that this 13 millimeter kind of sits in. And then it just slides in. And then this just pinches, the 13 millimeter bolt just pinches against this part on the block. Okay, the uh, bracket's installed. It's a six millimeter Allen at the top, a 13 millimeter down at the block there. Now we have to 
we have pretty much everything done on the turbo except the turbo inlet pipe and this and the shield so what we're going to do is we are going to fill this hole this is your oil fill line we're going to take and fill this hole with uh motor oil so that the turbo is properly has plenty of lubrication there when it starts spinning so you want to basically fill it up all the way to the hole here or all the way to the top of the hole it doesn't take much just barely put any in there i basically got oil now all over this so uh, i'll be having some smoke Okay, another helpful hint. This uh, double-sided stud here uh, on the fill line didn't want to go in easy. Uh, what I recommend is to just put here with your other hand free, put some pressure on because this is kind of tight, and then that all out to go in straight. I basically I I ran a chase through it and uh, everything to make sure it was okay. It was just with the angle that it was at. Wasn't allowed to go in straight, so you just kind of got to manipulate the, the pipe to uh, to allow that to work. And okay, the other part of the install I'm going to do, in addition to the turbo, is this uh, 034 Motorsports uh, turbo inlet pipe. I'm going to just install it right in here. It comes with a new screw that's got a 5mm uh, Allen in it, so just you basically just put it in there and then twist it into place. Okay, so you actually lean it forward and then push it in, bring it back like this, you can see the O34, and then it comes up behind this, and then take the 5mm Allen that came with it, and put it in here, thread it through both, make sure it stays tight, and then you're done with your turbo inlet pipe. Tighten that up with the actual Allen. So you got a five millimeter that comes with the kit. So it gets rid of that Torx, which I am fine with. Okay, learn from my mistakes. I had to take back out the turbo inlet pipe to tighten up the uh, charged air pipe to the intercooler here. So after I do this, I'll put the O34 Motorsports pipe back on. But learn from my mistakes so that you don't make them yourself. Okay, so this is back in. I'm also just, I'm not connecting this yet. There's a, a little rubber thing on here that I'll have to take off, but I'm not going to connect it yet. But I want to go ahead and put it in because the, before the rail goes over this, um, so this uses this, uh, weird screw right here which is held in by t30 torx so we're just gonna put that in and then uh i think at that point i'm gonna say now i will finally focus on the down pipe that i've been talking about so much change of plan i went ahead and got all this coolant lines put in the t30s here 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 and then this bracket slides on top here uh, the only thing left to do would be to do the coil packs and stuff like that i'm going to wait and do the um and we're actually going to do the downpipe now okay i went ahead and mounted the uh hanger for the downpipe uh just put some lithium grease on there to help it get in there the bent or the curved oval thing goes up um, so now we're just going to take and twist it, and I believe we came out going counterclockwise, so this way we're just going to kind of rotate it in uh, clockwise up through there. So just rotate it up through here clockwise. This should go in much easier. The HPA has only got uh, a hanger on one side here instead of two sides like the uh, stock one, and also it's not anywhere near as long because there's some other pieces that we got to connect back over to here so i'm just going to rotate it up okay it did go in fairly easy i've just got the two uh bolts that hold the hanger to the k-member uh in loosely and i'm going to go up to the top and get the uh everything situated up there also i got to put the uh exhaust 
the uh, turbo gasket uh, or between the that goes between the uh, turbo and the uh, downpipe. I got to put that on. So I'm going to go up to the top and get everything buttoned up up there, and then we'll tighten up down here. Okay, I did buy a new V band uh, from ECS and a kit. I will post uh, the part number for the kit here on the video. It comes with the V band. It comes with the two dog bone bolts that are one time use and it comes with uh, an exhaust gasket which I don't really need but I have an extra and a the three bolts for the uh, drive shaft that are one time use so it has everything you need to do the uh, to do this and I'll post the part number right here. So the only exhaust hanger in this HPA Motorsports downpipe is right there. You can access it from the front side of the K-member by the axle. Um, probably the best way to get to it. I'm going to hand tighten and then figure out a way to get a wrench in there. Okay, so we are going to now put in the uh, O2 sensor. Uh, put some anises on it. And I'm just going to... I've got it secured kind of up at the top, although I don't think I'm going to have to undo that now. I don't have it secured, secured, but uh, I put uh, just a clip up there to hold it so that I could, wouldn't have to reach in there, but probably it's better just to grab it from the top, any, or from the top anyway. All right, so I got it down here, brought the whole, brought the whole line down. Got the O2 sensor wrench on it. Just going to tighten it up here. off and now I'm going to have to reach in from up there and grab the connector and bring it back up. Okay so I reached down I grabbed the end of the uh, O2 sensor. Now this uh, HPA kit does come with this extension piece so I'm going to connect it uh, over there and I'm going to see how far it goes and then that'll let me know how far I got to route this thing and try to determine some of the other problems. Uh, I'm still wondering if that drive shaft's going to be an issue or not. Okay, so here's the extension piece. Got it here, comes down, makes it all the way over to about right here to the bend. Um, so it's a pretty good sized piece. Um, I'm now going to start uh, connecting the rear of the exhaust. So there's a couple more pieces here. Okay, again, learn from me so that you don't make the mistakes I did. I've re I've loosened this uh, the nut on the uh, downpipe that holds it to the uh, block here because we still got to um, force the uh, the motor forward to get the uh, drive shaft here up. So I've basically I've removed the block of wood back here. I have now. Uh, I rocked the car forward with a pry bar. Again, same place I rocked it where I got it before. Right over here uh, on these dimples. The bolt holes that go from the transmission. So I've got, and I carefully lined, I made sure I had the pilot bearing lined up when I put it back in there. So we've got the pilot bearing lined up. So now what we got to do is we got to rock the motor back and put in our two new bolts back in the dog bone here. So I've got the new bolts ready right here that came from ECS. Short one is in the front, the long one is in the back. Okay, I got the two dog bone bolts in. Uh, what you have to do is if you have the car down on the wheels like I have it on these ramps, you it's loading up the K member too much and the chassis and everything so what you have to do is basically get both wheels unload them so get them just where they're just starting to come off that'll uh, basically put the play in the chassis enough to allow you to get that pry bar I put it up through here like I was earlier um, so just put the pry, pry bar through this hole in the K member get through there and then you've got to kind of hold it um, in place uh, to get it uh, 
and I worked them in by hand most of the way and then I finished up with the electric ratchet. I'm now going to torque them to 50 newton meters to spec and uh, I might just go ahead and leave this side up on the jack because I need to uh, pull this wheel off eventually and uh, do the uh, shields but now I'm going to see if I can get the uh, so the drive shaft is mostly aligned uh, it looks like it's a hair off maybe um, Hopefully it's got enough play in it to where it'll line itself up properly. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so now it's resting in those holes. So now I got to go feed the new uh, M12s also. So that came with the kit. Those are one-time use bolts. Okay, so I'm working the uh, prop shaft bolts in by hand. I got the uh, the one there at about eight o'clock. The one that's about one is. Uh, and also the one that's slower here, this bigger uh, downpipe now is uh, making it a little bit more difficult for me to get that one in, but I've just got to work on it. All right, got her done in 50 newton meters and 90 degree, extra 90 degrees on each of these. You can see these up through the K member to help you align the bolts again. It's a 10 millimeter 12 point socket. Uh, I only have 12 points in the half inch which worked good for my torque uh, torque wrench uh, bigger one and also the I had to use the breaker bar to give it that extra 90 degrees so the drive shaft is now in the dog bone is set the motor is good the only thing that we have left to do now is install the basically the t midsection pipe here between the old exhaust back there and this flange so I came here on the uh, on the downpipe this is the midsection um, I marked about where the farthest it could slip into here uh, with a marker and then laid this out so that it's kind of flat I think that's the way it's supposed to go there aren't really any directions uh, and now I basically pulled it out from underneath here and basically slid it into where it's about as far in as it can get and now I'm going to come underneath here and just fit it this part goes in the stock the OEM slip uh, fitting fits on that okay I have the downpipe in I did reroute the uh, O2 sensor kind of slid it between the uh, downpipe underneath the heat shield here uh, because it was just uh, this is about the best way I found to do it um, might actually put a zip tie just right here uh, just to make sure it doesn't move on that uh, circle there um, it, I did have to clearance a little bit on the heat shield just kind of press up right here because there's just not much clearance I might have to come back underneath here and clearance it a little bit more um, this is about the only way that this pipe goes on right here so just lay it out flat on the floor put it together and it'll kind of lay itself out and then this side uh, has to come down and this is about the way that it sets up and I've just basically got I might have to like I said I might have to clearance in here a little bit more there's not much room up here it was hitting I kind of pressed up on it you got to be careful though because you do have your drive shaft running up there so you don't want your drive shaft rubbing on this heat shield so I'm just trying to clearance the this uh, hump right here in the heat shield there's a cross member underneath here that's basically where I'm I'm just trying to add some clearancing right there without taking this up into the heat shield or without bringing the heat shield clearance too close to the uh, drive shaft so okay so this if you're using ramps uh, this is what I'm doing I'm just taking the scissor jack that's on here because it's a good steady flat area here just jacking the wheel up just enough to where it's off then I'm going to pull the wheel just like when I uh, started the video and then install the heat shield bolt for the one around the drive shaft install and then install the uh, two eight millimeter allen ones that go above the axle okay I got the car running now 
do need to uh, top off your coolant. I've left the cap off because it, I'll, I know it's going to be using some more here. Uh, also, did smoke a lot around the turbo while you were handling with your hands, penetrating oils, um, you know, the oil from, the, from filling the turbo, all that's got to burn off. Um, I'm just letting it kind of burn in. Again, I don't have it tuned yet, so I can't, without the tune, you know, I really can't get on it yet. So I'm just gonna come in here real quick and All right, everybody, just wanted to uh, conclude this video. As you can see, cars off the lifts, the ramps here, quick lift was great for this job. Uh, you can't buy them anymore, but if you can find one used, highly recommended uh, to have around your uh, uh, garage to do this type of work. Uh, also used it on a kid's uh, S10 yesterday to do a lowered S10 to do a um, uh, oil change on it. So great for uh, low cars um got the uh apr is 38 tune with downpipe runs great uh, i'm not going to do a video showing how great it is uh because those can get you in trouble but it is very fast and you can see other videos of people with the drag strip uh running those to see what kind of numbers they can put down they have been known to go in the 12s and the quarter mile um they the tune gives you 350 plus horsepower and almost 330 pound feet of torque um, out of the 1.18 motor um, and i will tell you they did make me um acknowledge that it would feel laggy um i guess some people complain uh, because a bigger turbo of course means that you're going to have uh turbo lag so turbo small turbos spool quicker run out of air mid-size turbos kind of can do both but will again eventually run out of air the bigger turbo longer to spool but can give you a lot more at the top end and that's basically what happens you hit about 2600 rpms it's pretty tame below 2600 as soon as 2600 hits it pulls all the way what into the red it is a lot of power. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, job a uh, success. I am very happy with the results. And uh, that combination of an IS38 OEM Plus and the downpipe works very well. Um, just be aware that it will seem like, I'd say it feels like a stage one uh, tune. Um, on the low end to about 2600 rpms feels about the same about the same amount of power and then it really kicks in from 2600 up that's where you're going to get it um, so it's actually a very good for uh, like daily driving just commuting doesn't feel like you're you know you're not hot rodding it around all the time but uh, runs very good so um, again Thank you for watching uh, this episode of Lance's Garage. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe button if you'd like to see more like this. Um, now that the ramps have been tested, hopefully we'll be getting to the uh, Firebird LS swap here um, after I get back from a, uh, a business trip. Um, and uh, we'll be covering that in some future videos. So again, thank you for watching and have a great day.